Okay, hi everybody. My name is Katerina Moraru. Uh, before starting, I was just wanting to ask you a couple of questions and I want to know how many designers are here. Okay, so three designers. Okay, that's great. <laughs> uh, and uh, who did contribute to any open source project, even if it was uh, a development? Okay, I wanted to see who didn't. <laughs> but okay, lots of people. Well, so um, I've been contributing to XWiki from the past 10 years and uh, I've been employed for uh, eight and I started as a GSOC student and uh, GSOC is very nice uh, because uh, from all the open source projects that are on GitHub, uh, there is a selection of the projects that are open to new contributors. Uh, but the problem there is uh, it only goes if you're a university student and they don't accept uh, uh, styling, um, styling content. Uh, so how can a designer contribute to open source if they don't know if that organization is interesting or not? Um, Red Girls Summer of Code has some um, tasks for designers. But uh, in the end, we try to create this uh, organization, which is open uh, uh, source design.net. And there, uh, we posted uh, jobs for open source designers and also we encourage organizations to post their, their jobs there. This way, they have a, w uh, hi have a way to find the uh, jobs related to this. Um, so if finding uh, a community is the, ha uh, is the hardest part, uh, then uh, you need to let the organization know what's your motivation. And um, I don't know, I would like it to be more interactive <laughs> because I uh, Can you tell me some uh, motivations open source designers could have to join your open source project or why they would do it? <laughs> I mean, uh, this is a question also for developers, but for a designer might be a bit more specific, so. I think one of the motivations could be to build portfolio. Okay. It's very difficult for young designers part of a, a big project, but an open source, if you're welcome <laughs> Okay, so portfolio is a good thing, and it's mostly targeted to new designers that want to do that. The problem is that when you're trying to build a portfolio, it means that you need to have multiple projects. So the commitment in that open source project might not be for a long time. And uh, you should tell that, <laughs> uh, yeah. that community that you plan to do that. Mm -hmm. First, they could give you... It can be for testing like uh, new ideas, because <laughs> <laughs> uh, new ideas like uh, quite experimental one that maybe in a commercial application. Okay, experimenting, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> Again, depends uh, how much expertise that designer has and also the community, how open is to, to experiment. You need to have a very open mind to, uh, to do that. Um, but it's important to tell the communities what are your motivations are, uh, because, uh, for example, they could give you easier task or, as you say, experiment or, or, or hard task, and, and they could accept that. Um, if you're a more senior designer, sharing experience could be also motivation. Or if you're a student, you might want to gain some money. And uh, uh, on the open source design jobs, you will see that there are some jobs that give money for open design uh, contributions, but not that many. Um, but still, this is something that we might want to have in the future, because that would assure a continuous uh, flow of contributions. Now, regarding expertise, if you read those jobs, some are very vague. I mean, uh, one owner of a project, they might think they want a designer, but they will not describe very well what design means. And uh, as UX is very ambiguous and everybody understands what they want from it, uh, uh, it could uh, contain from usability to graphic designs and, and to so a lot of other things. <coughs> um, and it's very important for you, if you're a new designer, to know what your expertise is and also uh, how you can match. Because uh, if you look at that board, you see lots of requests for graphic design. So new communities, they want a logo or they want a web home, but we discuss here about usability testing and uh, some interaction designers are very eager to do that and to, to especially because in open source it's very hard, uh, some tools need to be installed or, but the audience is quite broad and we can do remote. Uh, but this matching and seeing uh, what you want for your project and what the designer can, uh, can do needs to be very specific. Um, 
And what to say about the, the need and uh, the doing experiments? Uh, it's easier to say that you would want to experiment on a project, but if you don't use it, you are not sure exactly what, what it means. So for a graphic designer, it might be very much easier to propose like a logo or a sticker, but if you want to do interface design, you need to be a tester for, for that um, for that organization. Um, I don't know, have you interacted with designers in your uh, projects or uh, do you think that they understood the need uh, or do you know what your target is? I mean, uh, for a designer, it's very important to understand the target. Can you, I don't know, <laughs> if somebody, yeah? You, but you, you, does anyone really know the, the target for their open source project or how do you, how do you measure that? So the agreement there was that you can make a proposal if you use it and you become a user of that product, yes. so you, you have more uh, uh, trust and respect because you use the product. Um, okay. That's just, that's just, that's yeah, but that means that the designer becomes a user and uh, he's expressing his personal opinion. Um, but his opinion might, might be wrong and you would need to test what he proposed with other users. And here, <laughs> uh, you can consider that the committers are part of the users but that can also be biased. Uh, and uh, yes, usability tests could help uh, to test with real users, but um, yeah. Actually, that, that the problem with design open source is that it has always been biased toward engineers. Engineers, ah, okay. So Linux was, until Ubuntu, you needed to know what you were doing in order just to install it, right? Uh, and that's exactly what you would want to avoid having a designer on board. Mm -hmm. Like the designer has to be completely neutral and face the product as you know an external user. Or, you know, you need to have some motivation to use it. And actually, you're outside of the, of the, of the user pool. Yeah. You need more of that. And actually, this is the main reason why uh, open source organizations want designers, because they want somebody with expertise that could answer all their questions that they couldn't answer until then. So they rely on them to bring new ideas or to make the, uh, the soft as uh, uh, sellable as uh, iPhone or Apple or, or stuff like that. Well, well, yeah. Not everything is consumer-facing product. Not everything is iPhone or Apple, right? I mean, if you design things for data analysts, never analyze the data, they would never let you do that because like you don't understand anything about the user's face or user base. And becoming a user, even temporary, would make would build the credit and would make you understand the field. Uh -huh. So in a way you, you also don't want to be great to build a perpetual Okay, sure. But the, the main conclusion is that uh, you need to invest time in this, so it, it might take you a while. It's not something like you did a logo and then you can switch. In order to uh, contribute to open source, it, it might take, take you a while. First, because most of the projects are, are a bit technical. And then is the communication part, because this is very vital for uh, for any open source organization, but uh, the communication might ha happen o over IRC. And uh, for for the example, in the uh, open source design community, we had a lot, a large debate of if we should use Slack or uh, designers don't want to go to IRC or why don't we change? But <laughs> the reality is that all the major open source projects they're on IRC and you need to work with them. And uh, this is not a big thing that <laughs> is it's like a limitation and you cannot do it. 
and uh, then it comes the persuasion because even if you propose something, uh, you need to convince that community that what you propose is good. And if you do like usability testing and you gather data, it's much easier to convince because you don't need to be persuaded, you, you just show the data. But otherwise, uh, you will see um, very much resistance from open source project because they will consider it subjective and especially if the owners and the main committers would not like it. <laughs> Uh, how do you explain to them that what you propose is good or not? And the expertise, the uh, reason might be enough or not for some, some uh, organizations. I, I feel that data gathering is really difficult in open source projects because most of the users don't, so it's like we have like a form of usability form and nobody refers to that presentation. And even with that, I mean, uh, when gathering data and analyzing data, it's more on the direction of, of uh, user research, and you might have a uh, designer that wants to do interface and do the proposals and not necessarily uh, see how it evolves over time. Uh, so yeah, either you try to attract in your organization multiple designers, or you, you try to do a little bit of both, or you just, I don't know, see it over time, how it goes. I think that's, that's quite interesting point, actually, like generally open source uh, software doesn't want to gather any personal data, you know, whatever usage logs that is. And that's something like the project I was working at, actually, like that's very interesting. If you look at it the other way around, if you look at gathering data, it's something you do by but it's like by default, it's not there. But if there is a way to contribute to a project, as well, you explicitly agree saying, yes, I want to do that, Please put my name as contributor and become part of the community as much as I can. But the only thing I can is actually like, well, donate you this usage pattern. So, so if it helps you to improve, well, maybe it's something we could actually do. I mean, that's, that's completely different. Technically, it's the same for what happens with our phones and everything in proprietary software world. But from an ethic perspective, it could be actually a way to contribute. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah. those people get recognized, promoted, and see that those guys are actually helpful. Yeah, and some organizations do that when you start or you, you can anonymously send data about uh, your usage. The issue is that usually big organizations do this. So if you're a small organization and uh, uh, you don't have people to analyze the data or even make the, the, the software integration to collect that data, there might be some problem. Data as well. I mean, yeah. it must be other people should be able to contribute their analysis. I mean, it's not hidden. Yeah, that's definitely something we're waiting for. Okay, and regarding tools, this is a very long debate because uh, some organizations expect from open source designers to use uh, uh, design tools that are open and maybe, uh, I don't know, they used to use in Sketch or Photoshop and uh, I think this is uh, it's a personal decision. You, as an open source organization, you cannot force or expect that from a designer, but what it's expected from you is to provide whatever deliverables you have in an open format. So we had an example in, uh, in the design community when uh, uh, somebody uh, provided a sketch file, and after three months, uh, the developer said, okay, I wanted to see, but I don't know how to open it. <laughs> what is this? And uh, in the meanwhile, the designer uh, got bored because he didn't uh, receive an answer for three months, and we needed to find another designer that has that soft, which is paid, and etc. cetera. Uh, and also, you should provide all the sources. I mean, uh, some just uh, like uh, because they're attracted of the uh, open, size, uh, open source hype and they want to, pr uh, to do something for that organization, but they just provide the PNG and, uh, or uh, let you ask for, for the other uh, uh, dim dimensions of the deliverables. Well, and uh, proactivity, it's really important because, okay, you will have a designer, he wants to contribute to, to your project, and then he expects somebody to tell him what to do or what is needed without, uh, I don't know, understanding the, the users. And uh, in open source, the committers needs to be proactive and so are the designers. So you need to investigate on your own uh, what you think it's not working or, or, or what is working and, um, yeah, it depends on the mindset uh, you have. Uh, this is not something that that, uh, that we can change because otherwise you influence uh, the designer to to provide a solution or, or, or 
Another aspect is that uh, some committers, if they have a problem, they think they have the solution and maybe they want the designer just to make it more pretty. Uh, usually this doesn't work very good. I mean, uh, the desi designer should investigate the problem and maybe uh, propose another solution or reiterate on that. It's, uh, <laughs> it depends. Well, and uh, one thing that if you have a designer, you need to tell them uh, from the first moment what is the decision process. Because uh, every organization has a different voting system. Some, if you are a pass away, so if somebody does a veto, you need to convince them and the, the votes freezes until uh, all the core committers are, are agree. Either it's just a majority of votes uh, uh, that you can go forward or um, if there are not enough contributors, if you are available to do it, you just can do it without uh, uh, people complaining. Um, but for example, uh, Victoria gave the, um, the Apache Camel uh, example th this, m this uh, morning, and um, uh, there the designer posted the, the proposal on Twitter, and he got like 80 likes. And uh, he said, there are 80 people in the world that like this uh, design. Why don't you agree with it? Or why don't you want to, to have it in production? And the Apache was like, no, we have certain rules. <laughs> uh, but this was not very clear from, from the start. Uh, yeah. And uh, the problem is that if you have just a particular committee that does the decisions, uh, the results might not be very relevant. It might be faster. and. You, I guess you all know that sometimes for a feature you spend like three months to to get an approval or to to make it into production. And for designer, it's especially difficult because uh, most of them don't have the technical ability to implement them. <laughs> so they rely on people agreeing and people maybe getting excited of implementing them. So uh, the time to to wait for uh, uh, such a proposal to be implemented grows like I don't know five times uh, over. And um, also tell them what is the minimal time to make a decision. I mean, some organizations wait like 72 hours or uh, I don't know, like two weeks or depending on how many contributors they have and if they're a hobbyist. Uh, but for example, also in the, our community, uh, there was a very nice proposal for a mustache uh, framework. Uh, it was the redesign of the homepage. The proposal was submitted, and after one year, the, the com uh, and, uh, we also had somebody that did the PR, so um, we also did the front end part. And after one year, the committer saw the PR, I'm, I'm not sure. But in the meanwhile, the designer forgot about this or didn't um, want to contribute anymore because he felt that his work was not um, appreciated or responded in time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, commitment is one of the main purposes of designers. I mean, uh, everybody would like uh, the designers to be involved in their project and follow what they propose for multiple iterations and maybe do adaptations. So uh, this would be very nice. But uh, as you said, somebody, uh, m some designers just want to have multiple interests in portfolios, and. Are, might not or might be or not be interested in this part. And also, if you stay long uh, enough in that community, they might expect you to provide the vision or to show them how your project can attract multiple users. And uh, uh, yeah, this is uh, some hard. Uh, things to, to do for a designer or for developers of, or for any uh, owner of a community, and it's hard to s decide. Okay, because I'm late, uh, do you have any questions? <laughs> um, uh, there's, a, there's a need for, like, uh, because a lot of open source tools are command line based, and there are no, like, focused desi designers focusing on, at least I've not come across uh, designers focusing on designing command line and what happens is that we end up with every release we end up changing something major in our command line how uh, is that so is there is there something like that happening in the community 
I I'm not sure I'm understanding the question. So uh, your tool is command line, and you make Forward changes to, to the to the options. And the question was. The question is that is there is there something like this happening in the design community where command line designers are coming up or? So you're asking if there are job posts uh, for tools that are command line. Okay, I haven't seen one. Uh, as you say, maybe they don't need that much design. Again, depends uh, what you want to test. If you if you do usability test, yes, you you could you can do information architectures on that. Okay, you can decide if the items you list in the command lines are in the particular order, or if some are more priority than others, and uh, so you can do this kind of thing. Not necessarily visual design uh, uh, tweaks. Does it ever happen that uh, an open source project is started by a designer instead of being started by engineers and then the designer is kind of, you know, on getting on board late and not being able to That's a good question. influence on the decision and committee process procedures or whatever, you know, because it sounds like... Okay, so the question was if the, it's started by designer or if the, the designer comes late because there are two... No, no, that's what's happening now. Okay, like okay. Designers have come late to the party and the impression I get from what you were describing mm -hmm. is that it's really hard, there's such, such an influence mismatch that it's impossible for them to actually... So the truth is that currently, even in, in our uh, open source design uh, community, uh, if I look at the most active members, we are kind of mixed. So Victoria did computer science, I did computer science. Uh, we, are, we are able to start from a start uh, uh, um, uh, project because we can also implement. Um, having a pure designer starting a, a project I didn't, I didn't hear about. Yes. Yeah, sure, but that was not their main project, so that was like a side project, and yeah, th the main developers are from Taiga, so, yeah. yeah, so, again, not necessarily that's what you requested. That's very interesting, that's a philosophical question, because if designer starts a project and not implement it, it's not an open source project, it's design fiction. It's so ideas. There's no yeah. project, there's yeah. just kind of the main idea the other way around. If an engineer starts a project and doesn't make it usable, it's right. still a black box that no one knows how to use, right? Right, so except so other contributors who start improving it. Yeah, they like start the improving it in the engineering sense, not right. in the usability right. sense. So no one uses it, so then well, you have really to those with 98%. No, no, really engineering yeah. is done for the sake of engineering. There's always an interface, command line interface, API, whatever. There's yeah, but it's still very niche because, because only engineers know how to use it. True, that's, that's right. true, but I guess there are many products that say niche by nature, so distributed files... Yeah, so they are made that are not like operating systems. Right. They could have like a wide use of it. So I think what my point is in startups, for instance, in the startup world, the founders right. typically are not engineers. And that's really interesting. I mean, it's a, a guy with an idea of a service or a, pro or a product that later on in the process, when they need an engineer, they right. talk to the engineer. So, uh, right? If we speak uh, about that startup, usually the founders that stand up. Well, there are not sure, sure what exactly. I mean, not, not lately. Maybe those that are not well, Airbnb, for instance. Co okay. At least a co-founder, but maybe later in the process. I mean, I think. And the question is quite different from open source projects. So yeah, no, but I, I think the question is like, uh, open source project, what's the, the time at first that make the project start? Because like, usually it's that like, you are, Giving an answer for what it needs, then you see that other people need it and so download it, and then it can start mainstream. But like, you don't think about an open source project as something that you have to put in the market and begin with like shares and revenue and kind of thing. So no, but you really okay. think about a lot of users. Otherwise, it would be a, like a totally side project. Yeah. But I think we're also talking about kind of a social aspect. Like, what started out <laughs> an open source project has this sense of movement or cultural phenomenon where people get together to like, the same culture or something, shares values, and they push it through. Oh, I haven't done. Yeah, that's true. Like, like, when they 
say open source, we start understanding this uh, social aspect or sort of meaning this social aspect of law. Yeah. That's quite cool, actually, because they could push it to other areas. Like yeah, you're making me think that Okay, so I'm so sorry to interrupt, <laughs> but thank you so much for uh, for coming. Yeah, and we'll have the yeah. uh, after this uh, track, if you have time, it's an interesting discussion. Let's continue. And now.